hi there and welcome back to another episode at Station Road. Now in today's episode we carry on with the goods yard where we left off in the last episode. So in today's episode we're going to look at the weathering of the goods yard cobblestone area and then also take a look at a wire mesh fence which is going to cordon off the end of the goods yard with the road that travels down the hillside. But before we get into today's episode I'd just like to take the opportunity to once again say a big huge massive thank you to all of those who leave their comments on the videos and in particular of course the last couple of videos because as you have noticed I haven't had an opportunity to respond to any of your comments which is really lousy but I just thought I'd like to say a big huge thank you to all of those who have left their comments and they're all read and they're all taken on board and there's some excellent feedback and also wonderful suggestions as well. So speaking of feedback I guess the beginning of this video relates a little bit towards that and it's just really in preparation for finalising the goods yard area before I jump into the weathering side of things. So I think without further ado let's just get into what I got up to. So interestingly based on some feedback from the previous episode there seemed to be a bit of a common theme and that was relating to the bricked up gates on the back of these properties and initially I sort of thought I'm not going to worry about it but the more and more I thought about it and of course with the advice from a number of you who mentioned that they shouldn't have been bricked up I have decided to reverse the bricked up gates and reintroduce the gates and there was actually a little bit of surgery required here it wasn't too bad I didn't think it was going to be overly complicated to remove that and put some gates back in here which were just designed up on the computer and printed out onto some A4 paper glued to card and stuck on the back of that so of course I think really what also spurred me on to reintroduce these gates was this of course would be where all the street bins are kept of course for the properties and without having those gates then of course I guess you've got to traipse through the house with your garbage bin out to the street front so what I'm going to do now is put in a wee alleyway around the back now there did actually used to be an alleyway along here and I ditched it and maybe it was just down to laziness that I couldn't be bothered reinstalling it afterwards so and I think there was some footage that I'll put up that shows how it used to be but of course things got shunted around and this got moved along so we're going to put this alleyway back in but we're not going to make it run all the way along the back it's just going to run to the back of these properties because the property next door doesn't have any gates that enter out onto the goods yard area so we're just making this up with some card and of course Metcalf brick paper texture so we're just sort of putting this together and seeing how it's all going to fit and measuring everything up all right so we're now ready to get into the weathering which will take place in this cobblestone area you can now see this added alleyway around the back of these properties here and of course with the reinstated gates at the back so that just leads around and out to the street front as I mentioned there was no point in running this further along here because there are no gates on the back of this property and there is actually an entryway through here that runs out onto this driveway or street area here. So 
what I prefer to use in terms of weathering brushes is I just pick up very cheap makeup brushes from here in New Zealand we have the local two dollar shops or thrifty shops and you can pick up sets of makeup brushes for quite cheap and of course they come in various different sizes and so forth there's a couple of sort of standard paint brushes here once again super cheap just from your thrifty shops then of course over here we've got our weathering powders and as I've mentioned before I make these up myself from ground up chalk pastels so usually what I do is just to have a play around on a scrap bit of cobblestone and just sort of get a feel for how it's all going to work and so I just sort of worked up this earlier just sort of seeing how the, the powder's working and gradually sort of merging in so of course the idea is it's probably going to be more grimy around the edges particularly around buildings through this track work here it will be quite exceptionally grimy and then of course around the way bridge and also the way hut so I've just marked out where the way hut is going to eventually be and then of course around the goods shed and the cattle dock over here so I'll sort of start from the edges and work my way in so you can see over here I've actually worked just this small cobblestone area to blend it in with the existing cobblestone and it's a reasonably okay match uh, there is a line running through here but you know that can be part of the I guess aesthetic of this cobblestone that maybe it was redone or replaced at some point so we'll just get into this and work our way around the edges and see how it goes so I usually sort of start off with a smaller brush and I may use these two here so we've got a chisel type brush this is quite good for getting into the crevices nooks and crannies and just adding a little bit more depth so we've got an overall sort of a brownish tone here which is just essentially to represent grime I tap most of the powder off so we're really only just sort of giving it a light dusting and the idea is to sort of really build it up into layers so it's not all just going down in a heavy tone to start with and then sort of blending and merging it in and I usually sort of will go over this with one light sort of dusting first particularly around the edges and as I said just slowly work our way in so at this point we'll speed up the footage
Right, so that's the weathering mostly complete. There may be some other areas where I'm going to add further weathering, possibly around here, because this cattle dock, which is partially in view here, I'm going to make that a disused cattle dock. So there's actually going to be a lot of weeds and overgrowth and things around this particular area. So that may be even more heavily weathered. But it certainly makes a transformation just from the plain Metcalf cobblestone sheets and brings a little bit more depth to the entire area. So of course one of the things that I'll need to do is add some more weathering to the buildings as well. So the Weybridge hut that needs a bit of weathering to sort of better in a little bit better and also actually to the good shed as well. They have been previously weathered but they just need a little bit more around the base just to help bed them into the cobblestone area. So I'm now going to turn my attention to the end of the goods yard where I talked about installing a wire mesh fence. So we just take a quick look. I've positioned the frame in position roughly and of course there'll be holes drilled in the cobblestone to poke the poles into that area and hopefully it'll give it a rigid fixing into the cobblestone. So this is the fence framework here and this is simply being cut from a large roll of 25 millimeter square wire mesh. Now the idea I actually got from Gormo on Great Chesterford Junction and I think maybe he even got the idea from somebody else. So I know that it's out there that people use this as a quick and easy way of establishing a wire mesh fence. So previously I've made up wire mesh fences and I've used styrene rod and although it does actually end up giving quite a good effect it is extremely fiddly to make up and you have to really sort of assemble a jig in order to put this together. So the mesh material itself is simply from a haberdashery store and I guess it's similar to a sort of wedding veil type material and of course you can get it in different colours. I was able to get hold of this which is sort of in a pale grey colour. It's quite light and quite flimsy so it's going to be quite tricky attaching it to this and getting it reasonably taut so that it stretches over the frame and doesn't sort of go all baggy and saggy. So I thought the best method to use is I will place this down here. I've got a bit of double sided tape on some heavy card and I'm just going to fix the framework down onto this double sided tape. It's just simply so it doesn't move about too much and then the idea is that I'm going to place this mesh over the top and tape it down with a bit of masking tape and hopefully that will sort of pull it reasonably tight over the framework and then the idea is I'm just simply going to drizzle some liquid super glue along the framework and of course that will actually seep through the mesh and the theory is hopefully that will attach it to this framework and of course make sure it's reasonably taut and stretched out to fit the framework nice and tightly. So I'll go ahead and do this now and I may speed up this footage just depending on how complicated this becomes. <laughs> Right, okay, not quite sure how well this is going to work. The glues sort of drizzle beyond the point of some of this mesh and it may take a wee while for this to dry too because I don't really want to be pulling this up and ending up 
with a huge mess so I'm just going to leave this now to set and come back to it. Right so I've moved ahead a little bit and it came out reasonably successfully in terms of the approach that I used for gluing the mesh on. So what I did afterwards of course is trimmed off all the excess just with a very small pair of scissors and I've now given it a base coat of a grey spray paint so it's coming together reasonably okay. There are a few globs of super glue here and there in two spots here but I'm not too worried about that because I can easily hide that with some foliage that might be growing up on the other side of the fence because on the opposite side of the fence from the goods yard it's going to be reasonably sort of overgrown in that area. So I'm just going to quickly whisk over this now with some weathering powders and give it a little bit of tonal variation maybe the suggestion a bit of rust is set in and then once I've done that then I'll probably go over it with just a blast of some matte spray paint clear matte spray paint just to lock everything in and then we can look at installing this at the end of the goods yard. Right so I've just marked out where the holes need to be and it's just running on the inside edge of this cobblestone so we're just going to carefully draw these out and hopefully I've got them in the exact correct positions to accept these pegs. So this one right here on the edge which might be a bit tricky but we'll see how we go. Right, there we go, we've got it in. And why is it that I carefully mark out these holes with a pencil lined up with this positioned in place and still the holes don't end up in the right place. So as you would have seen, I just sort of carefully bent some of the pegs to force them to line up because I didn't really want to drill any more holes and make the holes any larger and it now actually fits in there very snugly so what I'll be doing of course is taking this out and putting a dob of glue on the bottom of the peg pushing it back in and then it'll be permanently fixed in place. So I certainly think it's added another dimension to the goods yard area and what I plan to do actually is I'm just going to remodel this area in here so I'm actually going to cut back this polystyrene piece here and redo it and actually bring the polystyrene up more in a bit of a rise up here and then it's going to come down and actually meet flush with the top of this cobblestone so this actually becomes more of an, an undulation in the landscape here. So there we have it so far for the goods yard area and the weathering of the cobblestones and of course the beginning of this wire mesh fence. So I think there's still a little bit more treatment that I'd like to add to the wire mesh fence. One of the aspects of course is the 
matte clear spray does actually dull down any weathering powder effects so I think it might actually just whiz over it a little bit with a dry brush effect as well of course as I mentioned there is also remodeling that little bit of a landform on the other side of the fence where the road comes up and giving it a little bit more undulation and also meeting up with that cobblestone area so what I thought was not to actually anchor that fence in place just yet because I probably actually want to have some form of ground cover weeds or overgrowth that might actually be creeping through and spilling actually into the cobblestone goods yard area and then once I've done that then I'll anchor the fence in place so I think that may well come up in the next episode along with other aspects of overgrowth and weeds and anything else that sort of crops up between cracks in the cobblestones and around the edges of buildings and so forth. So I certainly hope you've enjoyed this episode and gathered some inspiration and of course ideas for your own layouts. I will sign off for now. So do take care everyone. Look after yourselves course don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll catch you next time bye for now